Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of WMSE's Local Live. My name is Cal. I'm here as most all weeks with Aaron. Yeah, most weeks. And I think this is the first time we've ever embarked on a, a setup like this. We have a very special surprise for you tonight Yeah, with Local Live. Our guest tonight is Ms. Kaylee Conway. And a lot of you know she has a brand new record coming out this Thursday, April 18th. She's going to premiere it at Anodyne on Bruce Street. It's called Surrounded Middle. It's an EP. She's playing alongside Gauss and Sister Strings. And I think Kaylee, uh, we go way back with Kaylee at WMSC. She sent us some of her very first music. Like, I want to say 2012, 2013. I remember the Cheese song being on there. And... Um, I just remember, you know, her music caught my ear and I was, you know, really into the first things I heard from her. She was also in the Miles Coin and the Rusty Nickel Band way back in the day and she was kind of sneaking her solo stuff out here and there. And um, Discipline Soup was the very first EP she put out in 2014. And I think, you know, in terms of the phrase vocal acrobatics... I use it very lightly, but there's like a style like, you know, Joni Mitchell has this mellow vocal acrobatic thing going on. It's not like showy at all, but it's just really nice and enjoyable, which I think is is Kaylee style. <laughs> now she's kind of moving into this more prog guitar rock territory instead of the folksy stuff, and I think that's really exciting. And I'm eager to dig into this new new record of hers yeah me too i'm excited um i did catch her set last year at uh arte partodos i believe it was at uh, the jazz gallery and that was kind of the first electric set i think i had seen by her um because i remember the first time i saw you was saw her was with lucy cukes at uh, bread fest speaking of miles coin mm -hmm. And uh, I was immediately like, wow, I, I need to check check out more of Kaylee Conway at that point. And uh, the Lucy Cukes have gone away. Uh, she's gone solo. She's joined Field Report. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff since then. But uh, even when the musical landscape changes, I think when you can write songs like Kaylee can write songs, you're, you're going to survive all those changes and, uh, and make it through to the next, whatever the next trends or waves are, or just make your own. So... I think that's what she's been doing and uh yeah like we said we've got we're not going to have the electric the full electric treatment tonight um we've got uh just a stripped down acoustic set coming up for you guys out there in listener land uh we just have a quick message to get to and then we're going to jump right into the live performance so stick around WMSE's Local Live is supported by Club Garibaldi. Located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview. Open seven days a week, Club Garibaldi serves burgers, hot wings, and more. And features live music weekly. For more information and Club Garibaldi's live music events, visit clubgaribaldi.com. All right, thanks Club Garibaldi, as always, for supporting this program. We really do appreciate it. And uh, now, without further ado, we're going to send it to Studio A, <laughs> which is where we already are, and we're going to have a live performance by Kaylee Conway and her uh, stripped-down trio, let's say. So uh, take it away, Kaylee. He might No bait be dangle No bite And in the morning Shining a little light Shining There's a little light Shining Ooh. Unlight Oh, the rest of the time Here 
on for cover. He hike.
quit Juanita went to the village with her family. Walking and talking with her family. Juanita went to the village with her family. on the swings Slides in the park Unforgettable That day was unforgettable Juanita went to the village with her family. It was so hot they bought her a smoothie. The 
jelly filling ends, you get the bland bread. You get the bland bread. Red as the June berry in June, as your mother plump with you. Songs in seven, as you took me home on the twelfth from Bremen. Love runs out of lakeside sometimes, and skies of daylight. Ooh. Finds me in July. Ooh, finds me in July. Ooh, WMSC presents Direct Supplies, Golden Idols. All right, we are still in Studio A. Not much has changed, except the music is over for now. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. chairs, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so obviously there's Kaylee Conway. Mm -hmm. Um, Who are your guests tonight from your band? So tonight we are featuring Ellie Jackson and D'Amato on vocals. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Hello. Hello. <laughs> because of Billy being sick, we are doing... I mean, it's not unfortunate. It's unfortunate that he's sick. Feel better soon, Billy. Yes. yes get we better. miss you, Billy. But, um, yeah, we don't have the rest of the band tonight because we're doing this in-studio, stripped-down acoustic thing. Mm-hmm. So who else is in the band when you're normally operating as a full-powered band? Right. Well, it does change around a bit just depending mm-hmm. on people's availability but um, uh, on Thursday for the EP release we're going to have these two who I just introduced um, we'll also have Tracy on, on um, backing vocals as well um, she has been singing with me for a few years now and is on the album along with Diamato um, and then we have Devin Drobka on drums John Larkin on bass, and we will be joined by Andres Corvetti on some Glock and auxiliary percussion as well. Does yeah. everyone know? Oh, Mike oh, Noyce. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, Kaylee. <laughs> He's not listening. Yeah, he doesn't have um, Facebook, but he might have radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Mike Noyce, my good friend who plays guitar with us, okay. has been for about a year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody. Okay. Got yeah. it. Cool, cool. Well, thanks for coming in as you are tonight. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Do you feel like you keep trying to go electric, but they keep dragging you back into yeah. the, the acoustic <laughs> the realm? doesn't want me to. <laughs> um, kind of. I mean, I feel like it's taken a while of playing electric guitar shows to try to kind of like shift um, the public's like um, awareness of who I am or like how they categorize me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because I've been like folky and still am described as such to most people and maybe I still am but um, maybe this is a sign the, the electric <laughs> thing just isn't working out <laughs> I don't oh, think so I don't think so I, I wouldn't put it that way cold. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> unless you know you feel <laughs> strongly <laughs> I thought it was something more serious yeah <laughs> terrible flu what does what does the term folk mean to you oh my god um, not much I don't know it like different things but right now it to me it means like an acoustic softer instrumentation and like unplugged organic stuff because I feel like that that's just how I get labeled I don't really know what folk means I, I think it used to mean something like you're really digesting and interfacing with like the times politically and and singing about that um in like a ahead of your time kind of profound maybe protesty way um but i think now that it's just a convenient way of categorizing music sonically it, it means like acoustic stuff yeah so many different things cuz you'd have to almost have like a new culture to emerge to have a new folk music right yeah. so it's like yeah, yeah probably a little bit of an outdated term but well but that's just how terms go true you know it's mm -hmm. like post postmodernism or whatever <laughs> yeah. so we're in the post folk realm yeah maybe or <laughs> anti folk i'd like to explore yeah. more what that really means but it seems kind of like it might resonate yeah mm -hmm. i don't know okay <laughs> Something to ponder. Yeah. <laughs> um, from what I understand, you started writing songs when you were in college, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering if you remember the very first song that you completed. Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah? uh, for the record, it is Volcano Song, which I still oh. perform a lot. Okay. Um, it was on the Lucy Cukes full length, Slip for Life. Um, yeah, it's kind of like, the hit. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great song. Yeah, I should have quit while I was ahead. <laughs> no. um, thank you. But yeah, I, I had a couple that I was like putzing around with in high school and stuff on the piano and maybe a few before, but I would be too embarrassed to ever like play them for anyone. Okay. I've probably heard I that. I suppose. It's possible, but there's one that no one has heard. Whoa. Yeah. I've probably heard it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just saying that. <laughs> Unless he's psychic. Yeah. It's possible. So when you were starting to write those songs, those first songs like Volcano Song, what were you listening to oh. on your own accord, you know, and did any of that stuff you were listening to inspire your own composing, your own process? Or yeah, actually, like yes. Um, I remember specifically when writing Volcano Song, I was like, coming to a chord change and needed a melody and I didn't know what I was doing at all and I was listening to a lot of Amy Mann and I was just mm -hmm. like what would Amy Mann sing here <laughs> and so that amounted to with her help cool to Volcano Song yeah she's a great uh, role model I think I so mm -hmm. I yeah love her stuff similar kind of vocal range too I would say yeah yeah, yeah. I think so she can get like down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lost in space is a good Yeah, good I've been starting listening to point. that actually lately a lot in my car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a sing along kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and that's what I love about her stuff like once you have a couple listens, the lyrics and the rhymes are really clever and really catchy and they they scratch at something and sometimes the storytelling is really effective. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's real deep. Mhm. Mm okay. So did you have a specific inspiration for wanting to go to a, into a more electric uh, style? <laughs> Is that, um, I didn't think that would be such a funny question. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, a specific inspiration for that. Yeah. I guess 
when I was go when I was going electric, transforming in my little cocoon, <laughs> I was listening to like a lot of Margaret Glaspie, and I really liked how she was able to carry a trio and um, really great songwriting over just like meaty, solid like riffage, but also just kind of chords and. Um, I, I basically I was working with John and um, the drummer who helped us like flesh these songs out for the record, Luke Rivard, who plays on the the, al- the EP that's coming out. Um, and we were just kind of getting louder and louder. Like I brought these songs to them, and I think we all just intended it to be another like acoustic album, but it just got louder and louder. And I didn't think the acoustic guitar was like holding its own. Um, so that was kind of where I made the switch, I guess. Okay. Match the venues, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of bars. (laughs) (laughs) Drown out the chatterboxes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do that. Yeah. So tell us about, you know, obviously you're going more electric, but how did you find your new group of people after the Lucy Cukes kind of disbanded and officially called it a day? Well, um, so I was dating John, and we were playing together in Cairns already, so we kind of had a little bit of like a musical foundation, and we are spending a lot of time together. Um, I knew I wanted to start releasing stuff just like under my own name without a and the attached. I just really felt like I had to do that. Um, so my goal was to have like another album done within like six months after releasing the Lucy Cukes record or something, and we're like two and a half years later. <laughs> um, but I actually met Luke, who drummed on it, at the wedding of my friend Lawton, who we ended up recording it at the chair company, um, his studio. So Lawton and my friend Maggie were getting married, and. Um, Diamato was my date to, for that, I think, right? Mm-hmm. So he was there. And um, that's where I met Luke. And he had just moved to town from Appleton and told me um, about like studying percussion in Ghana and stuff and like all the cool stuff he was doing. I had a so far gig booked that I didn't, I just was sick of playing solo. So I asked him if he wanted to do a one off. I had like a really good feeling about him. So he played this so far gig. And then, um, Basically, I kept asking him to do a few more shows, and then eventually I was like, will you two, Luke and John, be kind of the group that helps me like compile these songs I'm working on for a recording? So then we made the arrangements for those together. And then uh, I guess so much stuff has happened since. Uh, Diamato and Tracy were already, like when we started playing out as that group, the two of them would sing backing vocals primarily. Um, when they could and so I had them record the parts on the EP and um, since then we've added Mike we've added Ellie and Luke moved and I've played with uh, multiple drummers since including Nick Lang Josh Elke and Devin Drobka so it's kind of a hodgepodge yeah. it's hard to find a drummer in Milwaukee I was just going <laughs> to <Yeah>. say <laughs> at least hard to keep a drummer right yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, the drummers are very busy. Yeah, they do a lot of work, and you know, I ask a lot of them. I think, but I've been really blessed to be able to play with several. Yeah, it's cool. It's good to find you know one drummer after that search, a long, lengthy search. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the chair company. Mm-hmm. Um, is that where you recorded this whole EP mm-hmm. with Lawton Hall? Mm-hmm. And how did that process go? Did he kind of turn things around for you? Did he, you know, invite you to do anything new that you've never tried before as far as Um, producing goes? I mean, we pretty much had the arrangements, like, tightly composed when we went in. Um, Lawton helped me a lot with, like, getting, like, bringing out the tones I was envisioning from my guitar. Um... He's got a lot of, like, amazing gear and pedals and amps. So I kind of just, like, said a vague idea because at the time I wasn't very confident, um, like, producing my own tones. So I kind of, like, put him in charge of that realm, um, which was super duper helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, And then 
yeah, everything else, I kind of came in with demos. I would play them for him, and he knew how to, like, engineer everything so it would sound super amazing. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it was a pretty, a pretty like, organic. We were trying to make, like, a live record kind of mm-hmm. thing, so we wanted everything tightly arranged, and we wanted it to be something we could play live, like, pretty accurately. Yeah. Yeah. Have, like, a warm, intimate, but real feel. Yeah. Okay. Just it's not it's not like a studio album, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like just a band playing songs. But then there's some auxiliary aspects, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Overdubs, etc. <laughs> it's all about the dubs. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring up this quote that I that from you in an interview you did a year or two ago um Great. regarding <laughs> listening to albums. Oh my god. Um the last song should resonate with you into the silence that follows the album. And you were kind of talking about, you know, how you, you hate shuffling and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm wondering if you still feel that uh, Even, the sanctity of the album is... Yeah, I get angry er, <laughs> every day about that. Um, I mean, I, I can accept that, you know, streaming is where we're going and it really capitalizes on people's short attention spans and, and knows how to, like, serve them up music without really asking them to stay engaged in it um Mm -hmm. but yeah i I think i was talking to joy powers about that um because when you put an album on spotify i'm sorry they put a big giant green shuffle button um within the window that you have when you're viewing it right and it just i mean unless you are actively looking and like knowing that you have to first take it off of shuffle because sometimes it'll automatically put it on and that you have to like click on the first song. I just think it's such a conspiracy. <laughs> and um, But like what's the advantage of making people, like why does Spotify want us to shuffle rather than listen to it the way you intended? That's what I can't figure out. Oh, really? <laughs> I feel like they, I don't, I, I can only speculate. But they know what they're doing. They must know, right? And I yeah. think it makes them money. And I, I just, I, even without that feature, I think like the album uh, is degrading in value. You know, it's really expensive to make. Uh, mm-hmm. The artist thinks of it as such a big deal, this like completed statement. Um, and that it's just... Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, you did. You did definitely. Yeah, I, w- I went off on a tangent. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. There is something I want to ask that's you know kind of off topic. I guess we always have one of a couple of weird random questions, but <laughs> I noticed in your press photos and you know your more recent shows, and now you're wearing red. <laughs> mm-hmm. What does the color red? signify for you. Notice my or... face is extremely red too. <laughs> well, I can feel it. got studio <laughs> <So> lights <hot>. here. <laughs> you look like you're a healthy, healthy person. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I'm just, you know, wondering, are you artistically inspired by a particular artist who used red or a musician or is there some sort of statement, you know, that you're making alongside the songs with uh, one color? Um... Well, my guitar is red, and that's why I decided to wear red. Um, it's, uh, I just kind of wanted to draw attention to it, like to the fact that I was changing guitars, and, um, you know, I was dropping like an and the, and I needed more attention on like me, I guess, rather than the kind of changing band and. I just I also wanted a visual aspect because I'd never really considered that before in my performances. Um, so I feel like that kind of um, killed all the birds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it <laughs> looks real cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm into it. You're, yeah, you like it. Yeah. yeah, you know. You're claiming your new identity. Yeah, yeah. it's it, you. For a while, I like. And I guess I still kind of consider it like my clown suit. <laughs> you know, like you, we're getting up on stage and like putting ourselves out there and kind of like making fools of ourselves in ways. You know, we're <laughs> hams for attention. Um, 
so it's it's nice to just have like a costume. It also feels kind of professional to to be in costume. Mm -hmm. It also makes it easier to just decide what to wear. I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let me just play a quick message, and I think we will uh, have a few more tunes. I think that's what we're here for. Uh, so we'll be just right back in just a minute with some more Kaylee Conway music. I was working the third shift driving a van. All right. It's time for another second set here by Kaylee Conway on WMSE's Local Live.
my heart and soul Did I beg to be adored Then all my poise and prose Nonchalance and honor To the mist and moon And ah, 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 and lose And look how they sound on you The trouble I'll be in with words a fool would do Madly 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 I beg to be adored In all my poise and prose Nonchalance and honor And oh, if I don't free up I'm lost to the mist and moon
that you have a fever Believe in God For he gave you your own thoughts to use Run for the fruits Of your long-term labor Well, I'm scared to die But I think it is my job And it pays to move Still in Studio A, still with Kaylee Conway, and we've arrived at the uh, This Is Your Song segment, which we had to skip last week, but we're doing it this week. We had to, and we ran out of time. Sometimes it happens. We've got time today. So, tell us what you chose. Oh, I chose um, a track by a friend band from Minneapolis. They're called Sister Species. Um, Ellie and I... <laughs> I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie and I played with them a few weeks ago, both in um, La Crosse and here in Milwaukee. Um, we did kind of a show swap. And I chose a song by them called Take It Easy. I think that's what it's called. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've been listening to it a lot. That that was the one that I added to my like playlist that I've been jamming out to at work. But um, not on shuffle. <laughs> what? Well, sometimes I put my playlist on oh, shuffle. Oh, playlist, it's okay. All right. <laughs> but they're meant to be on shuffle. <laughs> um, anyway, they are like a super rad band that is these sisters, um, Emily and Abby. And um, yeah, I was really blown away by their performance. It's like really, really tight. And they have a three, three-piece trumpet section as well as some like blasty electric guitar moments. But then um, they get really really tender and their dynamic I think is something to strive for and I I try to do like pretty dynamic stuff have some really like loud rocky moments in in my songs Um, but the core of them and the delivery is like pretty tender so I really admire how they are able to do that live and just like as a band they're awesome but also just the way they operate impresses me so very much and Ellie and I spent like quite a while talking to Emily who kind of like leads that project um, about kind of just how she does what she does and like she got a grant from the um, Minnesota government art whatever they do um, 
and like made this really incredible video trilogy happen hmm. uh, to go along with the album that they were working on and I was just so impressed by that and like such dedication and such um, such corralling of people to make like an incredible project come to life um, so I just I thought everyone should know about them and I also brought you their record I was supposed to do that a while ago <laughs> but it's really good good cool. um, yeah all right well let's give this track a listen my head is full of fever dreams that aren't about you but just the same I'll struggle to explain just what it means to be someone in this way They tell me to take it easy Thank you so much to Kaylee and Yamato and Ellie for coming in tonight and doing an acoustic set. Mm -hmm. And Kaylee, do you want to give everyone the lowdown, where they can find your new EP, mm -hmm. where they can find you on Thursday? Um, any other shows you want to talk about coming up? Ooh. Did you want to answer this question? D? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it like you did. Um, so the EP will be released on Thursday. You, you'll be able to download it from my band camp, um, and then I'll, I will have CDs at the show, which will be at Anodyne. Um, doors are at 7. Music in this is going to start at 8. Um, again, we have Gauss, Sister Strings, and our full band. Um, so that's at Anodyne on Bruce Street on Thursday. And I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a ton of fun. Is an incredible lineup. Yeah, it'll yeah. be like such a good show. And I hope, I just hope everyone comes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so then Bandcamp, pe people can find your music. Yeah, it'll be on Bandcamp. I'll, I'll probably have SoundCloud it available on SoundCloud. Okay. Um, and it'll be streaming, of course. Okay. Um, can't beat them join them yeah <laughs> any <laughs> record stores or are they gonna hold your cd um i or? honestly haven't really thought that far ahead okay uh you just kind of go and drop them off right? yeah okay. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I'll, I'll be i'll be doing that <laughs> okay good okay um yeah cool. i can only like keep so many things in my brain but Tell there is it. a cairns show on friday night mm -hmm. that i'd like to let people know about at mm -hmm. company brewing um that is going to be with Redshift Headlights and Hughes Family Band. And Karen. I play in Karen, so. Cool. Yeah. A busy week. 
Yeah, very busy. Yeah. Well, enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any announcements you want to make? No. <laughs> well, I do right. want to say though that it was it it was cool that it ended up working out like this. Like mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I, I do miss my band, and it would have been neat. But this is like how we rehearse these vocal parts, just in my living room, just the three of us, and I play my acoustic guitar. So it actually felt really good to deliver them in that way. Okay, it certainly good. sounded great. Yeah, I hope so. It was a treat. <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. (laughs) Kaylee Conway and Diamato. Ellie had a piece out. But we want to thank everybody for tuning in to tonight's edition of Local Live on WMSE. Uh, Local Live is a production of WMSE Radio, recorded and broadcast live tonight from Studio A um, uh, in the WMSE studios on the downtown campus of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. And Local Live is produced by me and Cal. And uh, tonight it was engineered by us as well. Video by Moleskin yeah. Productions. And look for that video on our YouTube channel. Uh, hospitality for Local Live artists provided by Cedar Teeth Pizza, who can be found online at cedarteeth.com. Anodyne Coffee, who can be found online at anodynecoffee.com. And by Sprecher Brewing Company. More info at SpreckerBrewery.com. For upcoming guests and archives of past local live performances, please visit WMSE.org and tune in again next Tuesday at 6. We have Kulla coming in to do a little chill on the hill lineup forecast for ya. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, everybody. Spoiler. We'll see you next week and uh, stay tuned for Midnight Radio. Mm-hmm.